Okay, thanks. So uh, I have no disclosures. I do have some grants that will describe some of the data in this talk. But most importantly, I have discharged colorectal patients on the same day. Uh, I was charged with giving a counterpoint, so it's a bit hypocritical for me to give this talk. But like a good lawyer, I think I have to give the counter argument and raise some issues. So we're in Colorado, so I have to show some rocks. So this is, these are cairns. And when you build these things, the foundation is the most important. And I think over the last decade, we've done incredible work establishing some of the big principles of enhanced recovery. And certainly, we've done all this hard work, and now we're talking about same-day discharge. So this is really just the pebble at the very top of this great work that's been done. And as Larry has pointed out, enhanced recovery, enhanced recovery clearly works. We've seen all the improvements for traditional metrics, and more recently, we've seen more benefits in other domains in opioid crisis, with patient reported outcomes, even in surgical disparities, and we've also seen enhanced recovery work in specialties beyond colorectal. But why the heck do we want to start discharging patients on day zero? With the law of diminishing returns, we've done all these great, this great work with efforts and great results with enhanced recovery in the last several decades. But are we at a point now in our efforts where we do all of this work and the benefits are actually very marginal. And you can just substitute length of stay for that y-axis on results. And I think there are a lot of pros for same-day surgery. We certainly are pushing the limits of surgical care. We are discharging patients home, no patients to round on, no inpatients. And especially in the era of COVID, it improves hospital throughput. We don't have to put patients at risk in the hospitals. But I think my counter arguments for same-day surgery, and really these are just points to keep in mind, before we start willy-nilly doing this for everybody, is that it doesn't work for everyone. Patients actually don't really care about early discharge, and it requires significant effort. And I think effort that could be used in other areas to benefit our patients. So what about the point that same-day discharge doesn't work? If you look at any sort of graph of length of stay at your institution, this is what it looks like at UAB. And certainly we have patients who are discharged very early but we also have patients who fail enhanced recovery at the very end of this line here. And what about those first day stays? Well, a lot of good papers are coming out at the Mayo Clinic, Dr. Larson put out some great stuff here, looking at patients who are discharged early in the NISQIP database, and clearly there are certain parameters here. Based on this data, right, patients who are discharged early are very, fit a certain criteria. They have minimal comorbidities, it's a certain operation, it's for so certain diagnosis, and of course, the operation is uncomplicated. So same-day discharge can work, but it's very, very specific and narrow. Using a model, the same group followed up with, this, uh, with that previous study and really, really just established these four kind of the principles of what it takes to discharge someone early. Patient selection, standardized processes like enhanced recovery, minimal trauma, and logistical management. And the simple rule of threes is kind of really interesting up there, but if patients fulfill those criteria, that's sort of a dirty way to really think, hey, this patient might be discharged early. But again, it's important to point out, though, that this is very, very specific, like logistical management. I train at the Mayo, so I can say this, but Mayo has incredible resources. It has the logistical management. But many in the room may work at smaller hospitals, in a community, in the rural areas, like we have in Alabama, that doesn't have that logistical support to support this type of program. All right, so what about early discharge? Okay, so what do patients actually really care about? Well, certainly there are attitudes that patients have towards enhanced recovery programs. This is a great study done in Europe, a mixed method study that surveyed over 150 people and participants. And they asked patients, hey, what do you care about most in recovery? And guess what? This is what patients actually care about. Freedom from nausea, freedom from pain. And they really want pre-op counseling. And actually, early discharge is like at the bottom of the totem pole here. So it's not all about early discharge for patients. We might care about it, the hospital might care about it, but we have to think about the patient perspective. And what about the huge effort that's required? This is a picture just showing our algorithm for same-day discharge, and you can see tons of bubbles. And I'll tell you right now that this type of process at UAB requires significant residents, nurses, everybody involved. They are bird-dogging these patients, like when they leave the hospital, with multiple calls. And again, we think about the law of diminishing returns. You know, we're putting all this effort in, but are we really, really making a big difference here? 
And along those lines, what I think is that there, we need to keep in mind that there are other, other fish to fry here. There's other areas that we can really deploy resources. Looking at our own institutional data at UAB and our compliance with the different components of enhanced recovery compared to the ICER program with NISQIP, like we definitely have homework to do within our own institution, shown in red, in terms of compliance. And what about nationally? This is a great paper looking at 15 pilot studies across the United States where they showed that, yes, adherence and implementation of ERAS definitely makes a difference with length of stay, but even across these pilot hospitals, there were huge variations in the implementation and quality of the enhanced recovery program. International ERAS Society, many of our members here, also put out a great paper when you looked at all the adherence, but you can actually pull out, if you're looking at details of those tables, certain components that have very, very poor adherence. Looking at restrictive intravenous fluid management or goal-directed therapy, only at 20.6% across the participating institutions. And in the most recent paper from Spain, a really great paper to look at also, looked at their programs across, uh, across the country, and you can see that they can easily stratify their programs into adherence rates of greater than 70% or less than 50%. So my counter argument is that we still have a lot of work to go in enhanced recovery to even focus on this. And then the last thing is that if you look at specific populations, there's actually still major issues at hand for enhanced recovery. If you look at patients with low health literacy, for example, they have huge complication rates despite being under enhanced recovery programs. This was confirmed in a really large study from China that this paper just came out last a couple weeks ago looking at health literacy and enhanced recovery, and they also showed higher complication rates for patients with low health literacy, which is actually over a third of your surgical patients. And what they were able to show simply is that low health literacy for these patients was associated with poor enhanced recovery compliance, which then led to poor outcomes. So the argument I have here is that we still have a lot of opportunities and domains to focus our efforts in enhanced recovery. So in summary, Enhanced recovery clearly has many benefits. Same-day discharge, I think, is really cool and really innovative, but we have to be very careful in its use. And while we do this, we do have to keep in mind that there are other areas that we need to continue to improve the quality of enhanced recovery. Great, thank you for any, uh, and I'll, we'll take questions at the end, I think. Great.